everyone, Tippa here. Come with me today. I am going into German Village, just outside of downtown Columbus, Ohio. Originally platted in 1814 in Columbus's South End, settled by German immigrants in the 1800s. At one time, German descendants comprised as much as one third of the population of the city of Columbus. Primary development in the mid-1800s, the building of parks, schools, stores, and churches in which German was spoken at work, school, and at home. Large breweries were built and beer gardens were the normal until World War I came along and the anti-German sentiment started and the decline of the village was seen. It wasn't until 1959 when Frank Fetch started preservation and rehabilitation of the Old South End and the German Village Society was born. It serves as the caretakers of a legacy. The village revitalization has started with small lots, narrow brick paved streets, and the beautiful small red brick homes. German Village Historic District was made and is now on the National Register of Historic Places. The large and historic Schiller Park was named after the German poet Schiller. It went through a few names first as Stewart's Grove and later as City Park. It was the location for Oktoberfest and was once home to the Ohio State Fair. It is now home of Huntington Garden Promenade that encircles a 25-foot statue donated by the German-American community and cast in Munich of Frederick von Schiller. The park is also home to the Umbrella Girl bronze statue that has a mystery of her own, as she was installed in 1872 but actually disappeared in the early 1950s. She became Schiller Park's missing Umbrella Girl. Searches were launched, newspaper appeals were written about her story countless times, but her disappearance remained a mystery. Enter the 1990s and a Columbus sculptor Joan Wopes offered to sculpt and donate her version of an Umbrella Girl, and Phil Keentz designed her base, and the dedication in the Grace Highfield Memorial Garden was in October 1996. There is a suspension art installation in Schiller Park at this time, with many pieces throughout the entire park, by the Polish artist Ked Ziora. And the park is also home to the Actors Theatre of Columbus, who brings Shakespeare in the park every summer, where you can enjoy live theatre and picnic into the night. The live theatre has been in the park for 35 years and is a hit with the entire city of Columbus. You can find a theatre schedule online, but I'll leave a link in the description. Just around the corner from the Schiller Park is the famous Thurman Cafe. Opened in 1942, the restaurant has passed on through family and has remained true to its roots. Known for its Thurmanator burger as seen on Man vs. Food, this burger was actually made for the contestants coming into town for the Arnold Classic before it became a staple on the menu. The food here is all comfort food. With only 12 tables and no reservations, it is hard to get seated, but they have opened a takeout window next door. Our next stop is located in a brick livery stable. It is the oldest continually operating business in German Village. Schmidt's Restaurant and Banquet House is five generations of the Schmidt's family working to bring real German food and authentic German hospitality to the community. They are known for their jumbo cream puffs and their signature Bahama Mamas. They have been a staple in German Village for more than 120 years. It 
It's a great place to pick up a delicious cream puff to take to theater in the park. And right across the street is the Little Red Stable and they sell Ohio made gifts. And next door is Schmidt's Fudge House. Our next stop is one of the nation's largest independent bookstores, The Book Loft. Located on South 3rd Street, this pre-Civil War era building once housed a general store, a saloon, and a Nickelodeon cinema. But opened in 1977 with just three rooms, the book loft has gone through eight expansions and is now one block long with 32 rooms. So allow plenty of time to browse. With two entrances, one from the 3rd Street side and one from the City Park side, street parking can take a few minutes to find, but it is the only option. The courtyard from either entrance runs adjacent to the building. The central courtyard will house tables with clearance books and popular titles. The main entrance will lead to the maze of books and specialty items. The staff will help you navigate and you can request a store map. The 32 rooms are packed tight and you will have to share the way in the long corridors full of books. This is an experience and a labyrinth of rooms. Most of the corridors only allow enough space for one person at a time and you do see a lot of people wondering just how to get back to the entrance. <laughs> Each room has a theme and they do carry many books not carried by chain bookstores. There are five full rooms and one of the largest children's book sections found in an independent bookstore. You can grab a book or two, or many, and go next door to Stops on the 3rd Street side for a coffee and a break. From the book loft, you can cross the street and go to the historic St. Mary's of the Assumption Catholic Church, dedicated in 1868 for the growing German Catholic population, the original schoolhouse, which stands behind the church, was erected in 1865 and was the temporary place of worship until the Gothic-style church was completed. The distinctive spire was added, soaring to 197 feet in 1893. In September of 2016, lightning struck the stainless steel cross at the top of the spire, destroying the parish's electrical system. When the engineers went up to inspect for damage, they found that the spire was okay, but some wood on the roof truss joints had deteriorated over time and shifted downward, putting pressure on the walls. The lightning caused vibrations throughout the structure and worsened the deterioration. So the lightning helped reveal the potentially dangerous situation and forced the closing of the building and extensive work to begin. The interior furnishings were removed and the introduction of a steel roof structure and new roof along with the restoration of the plastered interior and the ornamental painted finish. And the stained glass windows were repaired and re-leaded. The whole project topped just over $8 million and the church reopened two and a half years later on a Palm Sunday in 2019.
My last stop is Franklin Art Glass Studios. Founded in 1924 by Wilhelm Kielblock, Wilhelm Kielmeyer, and Henry Elmore Help. Franklin Art Glass Studios, Inc. has been a staple in Columbus for over 95 years. The studio has been responsible for several major projects over the decades, such as the iconic stained glass lamps in Wendy's restaurants, and stained glass work for the Ohio State University, University of Dayton, University of Wisconsin-Madison. All of the studio's custom leaded glass pieces are produced on site by a team of highly experienced craftsmen. Franklin Art Glass Studios continues to be recognized worldwide as one of the nation's premier stained glass and leaded glass studios. Franklin Art Glass Studios is the largest stained glass studio in Ohio and the structure it is housed in was built in 1922 as a U.S. armory. German Village has so much more to offer from locally owned boutiques, specialty stores, restaurants, galleries, and bakeries. Makes this a great day trip for the whole family. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and I will see you soon.